Uh, turning to the DUP for a moment, and I understand there was a, a dinner here last night at, at £100 per head. As somebody said to me, it was another sellout. <laughs> I'm often asked if it annoys me that the DUP in March 2007, having hounded us st every step of the way, immediately repudiated almost every policy and mantra they ever espoused and somersaulted their way into an executive structure that contains five Sinn Féin ministers rather than the, the two we had in 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, annoy doesn't begin to sum it up. I'm sick of the DUP now claiming the credit for everything good that has happened in Northern Ireland since 1998. There wouldn't be an assembly for one of them to sit in had it not been for this party. They told us that the Irish government would never accept an internal settlement. They told us that Sinn Féin would never buy into partition. They told us that the IRA would never move on the issues of decommissioning or recognition of the legitimacy of Northern Ireland. Do you remember the days when an IMC report would, have been, uh, would never have satisfied the DUP? Or when the word of a couple of clergymen on decommission would have been regarded by them as laughable? Or when a motion from a Sinn Féin Ardèche would have been dismissed as utterly worthless? Not all that long ago. And I'm sick of the fact that the DUP took a political formula aimed at providing power sharing and genuine cooperation and turned it into a carve-up based on mutual loathing and balanced by mutual veto. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look at Arlene Foster and Geoffrey Donaldson today, snuggling under the duvet with Jerry Kelly and Martin McGuinness, I have one question to ask them. Was it really worth it? When you look at the DUP's U-turns and at their backtracking from every pledge they ever made, can you honestly say that it justified your efforts to destroy your old party and undermine your former colleagues? Yes, the Ulster Unionist Party has made many mistakes on the journey to what we truly believed was an honourable settlement in Northern Ireland. But at least no one can accuse us of hypocrisy and sheer naked opportunism. Now, what of the better deal? The DUP still boasts of their successes at St Andrews and the better, fairer deal that they return with. Oh, really? Were they talking about housing sites in North Antrim by any chance? <laughs> Try telling the electorate of Dermore about the better deal, where a majority of the unionist elect electorate voted against the DUP candidate. Try boasting of the better deal to those once core followers who have defected to the TUV, claiming that they've been sold out. Try convincing the Paisley, senior and junior, who have been toppled in a brutal coup, and toppled because their MLA group panicked when they became aware of the groundswell of discontent that accompanied the better deal. And try telling the better deal to the, selling the better deal to the tens of thousands of parents who have still no idea what is happening to their to those children who will be transferring from primary to secondary school in the next few years. <laughs> Accountability, ladies and gentlemen, great buzzard work. Accountability means more, much more, than being able to stop another party from doing something. Genuine accountability is what links the government to the electorate. It's about delivering policies and then facing the voters a few years down the line for their judgment. Putting the spoke into Catriona Ruan's wheel is fine, but it doesn't really mean all that much if you are still utterly dependent, utterly dependent upon Sinn Féin to approve the alternative. And that's the monumental humbug at the very heart of the DUP self-styled better deal. It isn't a better deal. If it was, then the DUP would not now be organising meetings around the province to rage against Rouen. If it was a genuinely better deal, then a mutually agreed transfer process would have been embedded into the programme for government. 
The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, the DUP can do nothing, absolutely nothing, which doesn't have the imprimatur of Sinn Féin. Call that what you will, but don't dare, don't dare continue with the pretense that it is a better deal, let alone a fairer deal. When a party doesn't believe in anything much more, much apart from office itself, then it will do everything it can to safeguard that office, because that is the be-all and end-all of its existence. And being and remaining in office is all that really matters to the DUP.